Welcome, everyone, to Z Church. We are the live, interactive, international, spirit-led, online church at the speed of light. And we're glad you're here with us today. We welcome you. Um, whether you're joining us via the Zoom platform where we can be interactive, or you might be watching on social media, or maybe even listening to this message after it's recorded, we, we want to let you know that you're part of the Z Church family. If you're being fed and nourished by the message here today, you're part of us. You're part of the family, part of God's family and the Z Church family, and we welcome you. Um, if you're watching and joining us by one of the social media platforms, please feel free to leave a comment. Uh, let us know what you think about the service or even send us a question or request because you are part of the family and we do want to hear from you. In just a few minutes, we're going to hear today's message by Pastor Loretta Huggins on In My Father's House. And after that message, we will have communion and a time of fellowship in our afterglow portion of Z Church. And we hope you'll stay around and be part of that. But first, we're going to start with a word of prayer from Anna. So Anna, please lead us in prayer. Thank you, Bob. Beloved Lord, uh, we thank you for the call and love you have placed on our pastors, Larry and Red. Open the hearts of the people who see and who will see later this message that comes from you and you touch their lives. Open their eyes and ears so that they discover the great love with which you have loved us and that you always have your arms open when we come to you. Thank you for all this. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Now, Joseph, lead us in worship. Thank you, Anna. Now, how many of you know that there's nobody greater than Jesus? Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning. Come follow me. I climbed up to the highest mountain, looked all around, couldn't find nobody. I went down into the deepest valley, looked all around down there, couldn't find nobody. And I've been down there three times, come on. I went across the deep blue sea, couldn't find no one to compare. To your grace, your love, your mercy, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Nobody can hear. Me like you can, almost oh, holy one. You are the great I am. Awesome in all your ways, and mighty is your plan. You are He who carried our redemption plan. Come on. You are He who carried our redemption plan. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, and I still couldn't find nobody. There's nobody greater, 
There's nobody greater, nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, and I still couldn't find nobody, because there's nobody greater, nobody greater. Nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you. Come on, all. Nobody greater, nobody greater. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Now, come on, everybody. We got to lift our voices to the Lord. There's nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Nobody greater. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody greater. Nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joseph, for the wonderful worship. Well, it is my pleasure and privilege to introduce the couple of today. They have been all around the world, and to me, they're just overcomer. Because they follow God's voice and they go wherever God asks them to go. And and they and they 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 apply faith and they overcome the process. And let's just welcome Pastor Larry and Pastor Lorda Huggins. Amen. Thank you, Amen. everybody. Praise the Lord. Uh, Amazing yeah. Z team. Thanks for that great introduction. Praise and worship was super. Wow, and the pre-prayer was wonderful. Praise God. And, and you I look think good. You look good. I do. It's Father's Day. I've got to keep it up going here. Oh, I don't even have a mic. I look good, but can't hear me. Very good. <laughs> Praise God. What a great pre-prayer. And uh, yes, I know I'm going to have to do it. <laughs> Hi, best friend. <laughs> Hello, darling. So good to see you and Larry. <laughs> and, and you're getting ready to be a grandmama. I am. I'm so excited. God, uh, it's a miracle. It is a miracle. Praise it God. It really is. And we'll be talking about that today. Yeah. And, yes. uh, you know, uh, everybody's uh, thinking about uh, Christina and Paula, but I want to say kudos to uh, David. He had a little bit to do with this, too. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, he did. <laughs> exactly. Can I oh, say one Jean. thing? <laughs> yes, you may, Jane. Can I say one thing? One Christina thing. wouldn't be here if it wasn't for... You! <laughs> Father's <laughs> Day is tomorrow. Happy Father's Day, Pastor Larry. Uh, happy Father's, Father's Day, Day to all the fathers too, here. Jean. But Christina didn't get here by herself, oh, okay? Yes, so. yes, there you go. <laughs> we are you and the fathers. <laughs> Jean, you're the patriarch. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> so we all are going to say it together. Unmute yourselves, everyone, and say Happy Father's Day. Let's do it. Happy, Happy Father's, Father's Day. Day. Yeah. Happy and to you Father's too, Jean. <laughs> well, we're going to have a, a great service today. I feel it. As Pastor Loretta said, it started off good with uh, prayer and prophecy. And I'm just going to step away. Keep talking. And uh, <laughs> Okay, I'm here by myself, but Pastor Loretta is going to be bringing the message today. I'll join her a little later for a little bit of ministry. 
And I just want to say again, happy Father's Day. Of course, when Father's Day rolls around, I think about my father. And uh, I'm going to chime in with Gene here. I was thinking about my grandfather, who, uh, you know, he had something to do with, uh, with our legacy. And I had the greatest grandfather. He was a farmer in East Texas. He lived in a, in a big three-story house, and he had a truck farm, and cotton farm, and everybody loved Brock Shelton, who's my maternal grandfather. I'd spend my summers with him. My best cousin, David Ray, and I would have the time of our lives on uh, Grandpa's farm and with my grandpa, and he liked to fish and hunt and spend time with us. And, and uh, what a great time and great memories I've had with my grandfather. He's a good Christian, uh, went to church faithfully, he sang just like I do loud and off key <laughs> but he, he enjoyed the lord and everyone in town loved him he uh he was absolutely uh one of the kindest men i'd ever met and i'm grateful today for yeah, my sure. father but i'm also grateful for my grandfather so you grandpas out there we're going to salute you today well, the lady of the hour is back, and you have a good message for us. I'm and sure. I have to apologize to everyone. With my phone, my mic was on, and I'm sure you heard me rustling and bustling and out behind no, the scenes. You didn't? We did not hear. Oh, good. Praise God, because I was looking for my fan. <laughs> well, you're going to need that. Because I was actually surprising. trying to tell you that, but praise That's God. That's all right, Pastor <laughs> Tim, but thanks for thanks for. Um, well, you know, Tim watches everything, and uh, if our signal goes bad or if mic goes off, Tim lets us know. Thank you, Tim. But listen, thank you, everyone. The Lord. And um, Anna and Javier, thank you. And Bob, what a great introduction. Uh, what a great pre-service welcome. It's all been good, and I know it's getting ready to get better. And so I'm going to step off and let you have all the time you need. Thank you, Pastor. And I'll be right there. Praise God. It's so good to see you all. And I want to say hello to everyone that is on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, and what have you. And you know what? Live broadcast. You know what? Life goes on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, this is the pre-evening, or if you will, um, Father's Day Eve, and I must apologize to you. It is so hot here, and I had my little um, remote control fan, but it has gone off, and I'm going to ask Pastor if he could bring a fan in here. Pastor, praise God. He's looking for a... Um, right he's you. walking right in front of me. Isn't that wonderful? And I'm going to step up here. And there you go, Pastor. Thank you. Now that'll work. That oh, that works. Praise God. We believe in God. Air conditioning. It's not hot in here. <laughs> okay. Now we know we have to pray for Pastor. Well, here we are. It's a wonderful day. It's Father's Day tomorrow, and I want to talk about fathers. I'm going to get my napkin here because I tell you, it is just really smoldering. We have a house here that we're very thankful for. However, the air condition is on the end of the house and where we have our studio, there is no air condition. So praise God. So if you see me kind of melting a little bit, just stay with me and know that God is good. Gene said something that was very interesting. He said, you know, we're giving everyone all of this credit. He said, but no one in his family would be there if it weren't for him. And of course, last uh, month or so, we celebrated Mother's, Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of us mothers. But this is about fathers. And it's real important that we take a look at this because without the father, we won't or don't have a family. It says in Ephesians that unto God, whom all the families are named, who all the families have been created. You see that? Fathers are the, the ones that create the family, if you will, with not without the help of the mother, but we're talking about fathers. And thank you, Pastor, for cooling it down in here. Now, I want to talk about three men, and then I'm going to give you some scriptures. 
The first one is my father. My, he is my stepfather, but he has been a father to me for more than 60 years. He came into my life when I was seven years old. He married my mother and he took me in as if I were his only or his biological child. Now that's important for you to think about because he had a father's heart. Even though I was not, and still I'm not his biological child, he took care of me. He said to my mother, basically, I'm paraphrasing, I don't know exactly the words that were said, but he proved his promise to take care of her and to take care of me. And consequently, I have other brothers and sisters. And for as far as he's concerned, there's no difference between me and my uh, his biological children. Yeah. Why is that? A man would take another person's, another man's child and care for them. That's a father. Stay with me. Another man who has been absolutely tremendous is Larry Huggins. And he did the same with my son. When my son was about 17 years old, he was getting ready to go into, uh, he was getting ready to graduate, about 16 and a half actually, and he was preparing for his gradu uh, graduating year and so forth. And so one day while praying with him, I said, you said the Lord's going to give me a good husband, but he's not only going to give me a good husband, he's going to give you a good father. Well, um, not to get throw anyone on to the curve or anything, but um, his biological father and I uh, were separated early on in his life and then consequently were divorced when he was 13 years old. And so most of my son's life, just about all of my son's life, if you will, I have been a single parent. His father, not throwing anyone to the curb, just wasn't there. So Yusuf says to me, mom, you know, I, I'm with you. I'm praying that God will give you a good husband because you deserve someone who loves you and takes care of you and so forth. But I'm just about uh, going to be an adult, a full adult pretty soon. And I haven't really had any father figure in my life except for granddad, who has been wonderful. He said, so I don't need a father. That's how he said it. <laughs> well, his mom, which he will attest to, is a little bit intense. And she can get a little bit intense when she's like, nope. I'm not going to agree with that at all. And I just didn't blow up at him, but I just looked him in the eyes and I was intense. And I said, Yusuf, God's going to give me a good husband because I already had it on the wall where I wanted my husband to be so tall. <laughs> there he is. I wanted him to be dark, tall and handsome. So Two out of three is not bad. <laughs> That's so <God> great. <laughs> so God blessed me with this wonderful man. But I have to tell you, I said to my son, you are going to have a father. And he looks at me. He goes, okay, mom. I said, because you will never. Excuse me for raising my voice, but that's how I did. I pointed to him. You will never outgrow your need for a father. Amen. Amen. God gave my mother a good husband who was a father to me. And even to this day, I still need him to help me or to pray for me or whatever the case may be. Even when I was an adult and I lived about 10 blocks from my parent and, and I had a nice little flat and what have you. And my son, I was terrified of spirits, still don't like them. 
And there was a spider in my bedroom because in San Francisco, we have what we call the black widow spiders with the little red thing going out on the belly. And I just thought, oh, my God, I can't do it. And the more I looked at the spider, the bigger it got. And, you know, it was taking over the entire ceiling in my bedroom. And I knew I had to go to sleep because I had to get up early in the morning, the next morning to go to work and so forth. I called my dad who didn't drive, and at the time didn't drive and did not have a car, I called my dad at 9.30 p.m. and I said, Dad, there's a spider in my room and I can't go to sleep. Do you know 15 minutes or 20 minutes later, my dad was at my flat, killed the spider, checked everything else, and then walked back home. He did that for me. I didn't, and I still haven't outgrown my need for father. I have to tell you, and I'm going to bring in Dr. John. Dr. John has taken me in when Pastor Pat was still here on the earth. He and Pastor Pat took me into their hearts as one of their daughters. I stayed in their home multiple times. And even now with Pastor Pat in glory, talking to Larry's mom and dad and to my mother and, and on and on and any of your loved ones that are now in heaven. <sighs> he, he still calls me his daughter. I'm not his biological child, but he treats me that way. I haven't outgrown my need for a father. Jean, your children will never outgrow their need for a father. Joseph, your children will never outgrow their need for a father. Tim, all of the fathers. Steve, your children or child will never outgrow the need for a father. And amen. all of you, amen. This is important. And you who are listening to me today, you will never outgrow a need for a father. And you may say, well, this is true, but I don't have a father. I don't have anyone in my life to, that I can look up to that can be a father to me. Stop. Stop. Because I'm going to do my best today by the help of the Holy Spirit to talk about a father who has room for you. Do you see where I'm going with this? I gave you three stories, three events in my life of three different men accepting someone in their life who they had not impregnated the mother with, and I'm not the biological child. Yusef is not Pastor Larry's biological child, but yet because of a father's heart, do you see where I'm going? Because of a father's heart, I was accepted. Because of a father's heart, my son Yusef was accepted. Because of a father's heart, Dr. John has accepted me. And because God is the ultimate father, there's room in his being, if you will, for everyone. Because Larry made space for Yusuf. My dad, Lee Dell Washington, made space for me. Dr. John has made space for me. And God, the ultimate father, has made space for you that no one else can have. Are you with me, church? Amen. Hallelujah. Whoever is responsible for the scriptures, please um, bring it up. Hit button three. There it is. In my father's house, John 14, 2. In my father's house are many mansions. 
And if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Now that's Jesus speaking. Just as I am speaking about my father, Liddell Washington, about you, Seth's father, Pastor Larry Huggins, about my spiritual father, Dr. John, here Jesus is talking about the ultimate father. I like to read it from several different translations because the word in this particular verse says, in my father's house are many mansions. Now, this is a minister, uh, scripture or a min, uh, message that Pastor Larry has ministered on so many times. And I'm going to ask him to be ready to speak and let the Holy Spirit obviously um, use you. And if you have to interrupt, that's fine with me because we want people to have a heart for the Father. This is difficult for many people who are listening because one, they may have never had a good father as Pastor Larry, um, Gene was there as Gene or as my father. Some people haven't had that experience. And so for them, father rings something that is not great. Well, stop. Jesus came that you and I would have a relationship if we were fatherless or motherless. Jesus came, shed his blood so that you and I would have the ultimate father. One who will make and has made room for you. In the 20th century translation, it reads, and the tw this particular uh, uh, paraphrase our uh, that was in Pastor Larry's library, was published in 1898. In my father's house, there are many rooms. Now in the King James, it reads, in my father's house, there are many mansions. That really does trip a lot of people up. So all the time we are thinking about in the sweet by and by, I'm gonna have a mansion in the sky, Whee! Mm, 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 mm. Stay with me. In my father's house, there are many rooms. Did you hear that? And if it were not, or if it had not been so, I would have told you. Stop. Jesus just said here, in God, there's many rooms. And if there is not enough space for everyone who has ever been born, I would let you know. There are certain religions and faiths and sects and things of the sort that says only the, the chosen 120. And I think they kind of have, uh, have uh, exhausted that number already. And yet the fact is there's a limitation here. But Jesus said, in my father. I know we're saying in my father's house, or but let's look at it this. In my father, in God, because if you look at this word and you begin to study it, it speaks of an indwelling in God and a God indwelling in you. In God, there's many spaces, room enough for all of us. Stay there. And if it weren't true, I would told you, I would have told you, but I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare it, I will return and I will take you to be with me. Now stop. Let's look at the Weymouth translation. This was in night published in 1905. It reads, in my father's house, there are many resting places. Think about that. Many, one translation says rooms, habitations. Another one says resting place. In Hebrews, it talks about striving and laboring to enter into the rest. Amen. In my father's house, there is rest. Do you know I had that rest, that confidence 
that when I this spider who was had intruded, uh, uh, invaded my space, I had confidence and peace that my dad was going to come and take care of that at 9.30 at night. Um, he's ha already had his dinner, I'm sure. He may have had to uh, take off his bed clothes and put on street clothes. I don't know, but he was there because there was room in his heart for me. I hope this is ministering to you. This is good. This is good. Amen. Yeah. Knox reads, in my father's house are many dwelling places. One reads many rooms. Another reads many resting places. This one reads many dwelling places. And I like the way the voice reads it. I'll start from verse one. Listen to this. Oh, to many of you who have been just standing and believing God for so long. And I know just like Pastor Larry, and I can just say about mothers, I know we mothers are the same, but we're talking about fathers. And you know, when your child needs something, there is nothing you won't do to take care of your child. Amen. The voice reads, don't get lost in despair. I don't know how long you've been waiting and believing God for healing, for manifesting of wealth, for restoration of a family, of whatever it is you're believing God for, a job. I don't know what it is. Maybe all of the above. I don't know, but it says here in the voice, John 1, I mean, 14, 1 says, don't get lost in despair. Keep on believing in God and in me. My father, this is really great. Listen to this. My father's home, my father home is designed to accommodate all of you. If there were not enough room for anyone, I would, or everyone, I would have told you that. I'm making arrangements right now for your arrival. You said, well, yes, Loretta, that's him talking about the sweet by and by. No, it's not. What he did has already, or what he promised has already happened. And I can prove it to you because the verse, uh, the chapters 13, excuse me, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 of St. John is about Jesus talking about his upcoming crucifixion. Read it. And in the uh, 16th chapter, because it's him, Jesus still talking. And if you read the 18th chapter of John, the Bible reads, and when Jesus had finished speaking these words, it was what, maybe a long message, whatever the case may be, but Jesus was telling them that I'm going away. And he said in John 16, 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient that I go away. For if I do not go away, I have to turn my page. If I do not go away, the comforter will not come unto you. The comforter has already come. Have you received the Holy Spirit? Yeah. If you have received the Holy Spirit, then this is past tense. And this, what Jesus said about it was or is expedient for him to go away was in the 16th chapter. And it was a part of what he said in the 14th chapter. Don't let your heart be troubled because I'm going to prepare a place 
for you. And once I have done that, I'm coming back and I'm going to make certain that the room that has been provided just for you in the Father, no one else can have it. Yes, there is a scripture that says that if God gives you something to do and you don't do it, he gives it to another. Yes, that's something different. But when it comes to Jesus having identified with everything that you are about, having lived every possible scenario that you could have possibly lived and has identified with you and only with you at that point, there's a place in the Father that has your name on it and no one else can have it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the Father. It's yours. You know, we sometimes think about how that we have been waiting. Pastor Larry and I, we have been believing God for several things. There have been prophecies that have been spoken over us in the 1991 and, 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 and since then, and even before then, before we were married in my uh, life and young life as a child, and even Pastor Larry, and we are still believing it because we believe God the Father is faithful. And we have Jesus as an example of keep on believing in the Father, because he will keep his word. And you know what that example is? When Jesus said, I will pay the price for everyone, he had to go through Pastor Larry's life. He had to go through every, as I stated earlier, he has to go through every possible scenario that Pastor Larry could have done, did do, and, and all of the ramifications and anything that might have happened. Jesus had to go through every detail of Pastor Larry's life covering the blood, but at the same time, maybe not at the same time, but the next moment he had to go through for me. Now we say, and we know that it only took three days in this realm that we understand, but he was in a realm that neither you nor I have been in. Maybe we have tasted and when we've had slightly an out of body uh, experience. Sometimes we have that, but I don't even think that's the realm that Jesus was in. And with that, we have no idea how long it took because he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. I tell you it, however long he had to suffer that and he had to believe in the father that God was going to deliver him and raise him and accept his offering and his pleas. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about it that way? Wow. He had to believe in the Father so much so. I it's uh, 150 billion people since the dawn of time, uh, human time, and and he had and yet people who are yet to be born, people we don't even know about. He had to live every single person's life. However, it was in whatever dimension he was in, he had to keep on believing the father that he was going to be delivered and his soul would not see corruption. He's our mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. He is our example. And because of that, he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I prepare a place for you, I will come again. And I will make sure that all that I've done, you will have the right, the ease, the help that you need to be in that place. Now, another thing about this place, and I'm going to ask Pastor to be ready to help me. Another thing about this place is that God, as I said, in the, the realm that Jesus paid for all of our sins and made a, a place for us in God, 
he had to, you know, it's like new shoes, you know, you keep wearing your shoes. And, and I know this may be a poor analogy, but, you know, you wear your shoes until pretty soon, you know, there's your toe imprint in your shoe. You know, when you put it in, you just it's comfortable. I've had to fight with Pastor Larry to get rid of his old tennis shoes because he always tells me, I just got them where I want them. And I'm thinking, but I need to throw them away, you know. But the fact is here that when he's using and he's in the, the shoe or even my shoes, it takes on the molding of my foot. When Jesus was identifying with you, And he was preparing a place for you in the Father. It's like that. It's your imprint. It's everything. It's all your hopes. It's all your dreams. It's everything about you. Whatever will make you happy. Whatever will uh, uh, keep you going. Whatever will make you the winner and and, uh, the victor and not the victim, whatever it is to keep your life on the top, the best, winning on every single score, whatever it takes, that's what Jesus did. And if I can use that analogy of the tennis shoe, there's a place in God that only fits you. There's a place in God, whatever you need. And you say, well, okay, well, you know, the Bible says out of the mouth or give one or two witnesses. I'm about ready to end here, but I'm going to talk about two things. One, the Bible says in Genesis, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It says that the uh, earth, or I believe it was, was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep but it says that the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters now i know there are people and if you're that person you have every right to believe the way you wish that's you have that right so there are people who believe in the seven day creation i'm just Don't see how that can be six days, six day creation. That's right. Because on the seventh day, he rested. Pastor's going like this. (laughs) See, there he is. Good man. Good man. Six day creation. And then on the seventh day, God rested. But if it's a 24 hour period, just just asking, and we measure a 24-hour period by the rising of the sun and the setting of the same and the rising of the moon and the setting of the same, if we measure a 24-hour period and that would be God created in seven days, then how is it that he didn't create the sun and the moon until the fourth day? So that word, if you look at it, really does mean periods. And however long those periods were, God was preparing for Adam and Eve to be on this earth. Today, we, we have been using it for a long, long while, in the, uh, what is it, uh, fossil fuel that were Billions of years before. You said, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But God was planning because he knew we would need it. My point simply is this. You and I, because of Adam, you'll see how I make this tie in. You and I, because of Adam, were the children of the devil. I know that sounds so hard, but that's true, Pastor. It is true. And just as I was not my father, Lee Dell Washington's biological child, he made room for me. And he provided for me just like he provided for all of his children, biological children. 
I had the same roof over my head. I was able to sit at the table and eat as much as I want, clothing, whatever it was and eat. Yes, he did believe in corporal punishment. So I got my share of it. So I, I really made a point because I tell you, I can't deal with that kind of pain. So I just made sure and I would beg my one of my brothers who just seemed to get in trouble all the time. I mean, you're going to get in trouble. You don't want to get spanking. My point is this, that he was the same to all of us. Just as Yusa is not Pastor Larry's biological child, yet Pastor Larry has made room for him and he treats him. You know, now it's such a relationship that Pastor Larry has with Yusuf that Yusuf will call Pastor Larry and, and confide in him and sometimes tell him, um, don't tell mom. <laughs> That's the relationship they have. And, and, and Pastor Praise Larry God. Respects, respects his wish. Just as Dr. John has brought me into his life. Well, you and I were children of the devil, but God made space for us. Praise God. Amen. God made space for us. So whatever it is, Pastor, will you come, please? He's made space for us. Whatever it is in your life that you need, you need healing, it's in that place. It's fit for you. You need some things turned around in your life. Jesus said, I will go away. And when I come back, and he was talking about going to the cross, he already went to the cross. He's already made that space. That space is already made. That place, that dwelling place, that mansion, that Monet, it's already been made. That's yours. And anything and everything you need, even the comfort of the Holy Spirit. I want to share one thing before you start speaking, Pastor. And I would like to share it about Anna Maria. Many times you've heard me mention how that she, uh, w when they were young, she was ma young, uh, newly married and she and her husband were struggling and she only had, a, I don't know, a few dollars in her purse and the true to her two children wanted uh, ice cream, wanted ice cream. And she just barely had enough to get them ice cream. I don't even think she had enough to get herself any. And she was just really feeling down, heart, no money, whatever. And while she bought the ice cream for the children, they are just having a great time eating their ice cream. She's looking at them and being very happy that she could at least make them smile and what have you. She said the Father God spoke to her and said, just as you are happy that your children are blessed, I feel the same way. I may be not saying it exactly the way, but I, that's how I feel about you. About a year ago, maybe not so long ago, but last year, you prophesied to her. You said to her, God's going to give you a big fish. That's the father. I don't care how long it takes. The father has been planning your life, your success before the foundations of the world. Do you see where I'm going with this? It's so true. Recently, Amen. And Amen. And Praise just recently, God. she gets a call from, I'm kind of paraphrasing, making it short. She gets a call from her boss. And the boss asks her to do a sketch for a possible client. And I don't know if she and others in her uh, organization did it, but whatever the case may be, she, her sketch was the one that the client wanted. So she, or the boss liked. So they presented it to the client. This client is such a big client. It's the big fish. You know, maybe I have to tell that story again. If they totally mm -hmm. sign, yeah. just... <laughs> That's wonderful. If God did that for Anna Maria and Pastor, that was a word from through you. Yeah. If God just said that 
to her and he did it and he planned it for her. He's doing the same for you. I'm not going to call any names, but you will know who I'm talking about. God gave you a word some years back and said, recover all. You know what? That's restoration. That's God, the blessings of Abraham on you. Don't give up. Know that God has prepared success for you. I hope this blessed them, everyone. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, um, Pastor Loretta, I don't have anything to add to that. I was just so blessed thinking that God has a place for me and it's custom built for me, like that old shoe she was talking about. Uh, you just fit right into it. No one else would be comfortable in your place. In fact, uh, no one can have your place. Jesus said, I, I've gone to prepare a place for you. And Pastor Loretta, the other thing that stood out about this message is some people have grown up with an absentee father. They didn't know their father or their father left or died or uh, so many things may have happened. And people don't have that that good positive image of what a true father is. And I like the fact that Pastor Loretta brought out that uh, fathers adopt us. Now, uh, I have several spiritual children that I care for, pray for, I'm here for. They call me Papa, they love me, and I get Father's Day messages from them, and uh, they're in my heart just like they were uh, you know, my, my own biological children. If you have the love of God in you, then you can make room for other people. You know, we used to laugh about people and say, God bless me and my wife and my two children, us four, no more. That's not how it is with the Heavenly Father. He has room for everyone. He has room for you. I, I mentioned my grandpa, he had this big old farmhouse and um, we had these wonderful Christmas and Thanksgiving dinners and aunts and uncles and cousins and everybody would come, brothers and sisters. And they had room for all of us. Uh, kids running around playing and people playing dominoes and people sitting on the front porch uh, sipping iced tea. And, and uh, everyone was welcome in, in uh, my granddad's house. And we children, we had a run of it. They, there was no place off limits. We, we enjoyed all of that house, big three-story house with gables on it, looked like American Gothic, you know, something really out of uh, Norman Rockwell. And uh, what, a great, uh, what a great memory that is. And I want you to know this, that uh, you're welcome in Father's house. And he's got a place for you. And you've got freedom. You've got the run of the place. There's no place off limits for you. He loves you, and he sent Jesus to bring you into his house, and there's only one way to get into Jesus, into Father's house. Jesus is the door. No one comes to the Father except by Jesus. That's the only way. Uh, meditation isn't going to get you there. Uh, other religious faiths around the world, they're not going to get you there. I I'm sorry. I'm not being prejudicious. I'm just telling you what the Word of God says is that no one comes to the Father except by Jesus. And that invitation is open to everyone in the world, everywhere. And all of creation is preaching to us right now that God is a good God, and He's here to provide for each and every one of us. And there are things waiting for you in the Father's house. I pray that today, uh, two things. For those of you who are already in the Father's house, you're already in the family of God, that you'd begin to enjoy more of the blessings that God has for you. It's already bought and paid for. So don't live like a second-class citizen. <laughs> live like a bona fide child of God. You're welcome in Father's house. And for everyone else, you're welcome too. But in order to get your ticket punched, you have to believe in Jesus. I want to pray for you right now and I want, uh, I'm going to pray two prayers, and this is going to cover everyone. I'm going to start with those of you who are ready to come into the Father's house. You've been living on the outside. It's time for you to come in. And then I'm, I'm going to pray for the entire family of God. This means everybody. Everybody who's Amen. listening, watching, receiving, and achieving what we're sharing today. We want you to enjoy all the blessings of the Father's house. 
Father, I thank you in Jesus' name for those who are listening to me today, and they've never really entered into the family of God. They've never really entered into the household of faith. They've never entered into the Father's house. And I want to say that Jesus is the door, and he's ready right now for anyone who will to come into the Father's house. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if you hear my voice, I'll open the door and you can come in. That invitation is open to you right now. All you have to do is answer the call. Jesus is inviting you right now. I want you to say this prayer with me, no matter where you are. I want you to say this prayer. If you can't say it aloud, whisper it. But I want these words to come out of your mouth. And Z team, you can unmic yourself and, and pray along with me. And let's say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, 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 I come to you in the name of the Father. Father. I come to you in the name of the Father. Jesus is the door. Jesus is the door. Jesus is the door. I'm answering the call. I'm answering the call. I'm coming to Jesus. I'm coming to Jesus. And I'm coming through Jesus. And I'm coming through Jesus. Into your house. Into your house. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for being my father. For being, for being my father. And having a place for me. And having, and having a place for me. Forever. 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 Amen. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. 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 Lord. That's you, how easy it is to Thank come into the Father's house. Yes. Just believe in him whom God has sent, Jesus. And Jesus came to us to bring us back to the Father. So many times we minimize the Father. I don't know why. I don't know what is it is about us, but uh, it seems like you, when we preach, we preach uh, more about Jesus than we do the Father. And we sing more about Jesus than we do the Father. And we think more about Jesus than we do the Father. But remember, uh, Jesus came to do the will of the Father. And you have to understand that it's uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And Jesus said that all praise goes to the Father. And we want to remember the Father. We want to remember the Father when we pray. Jesus said, when you pray, pray to the Father in my authority. Now, Jesus has authority with the Father. The Father loves Jesus. He answers Jesus' prayers. And Jesus said, listen, you get your prayers answered if you just use my name because the Father never tells me no. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So let's, let's, when we pray, let's remember to pray to the Father, and give thanks to the Father, and get comfortable in the Father's house because he's prepared a place for you. What a good message, Pastor Loretta. We love it. Amen. We're going to, we're going to have a, a communion service here. And uh, we believe in communion because it's kind of like hitting the reset button. If we've had a bad week and, you know, uh, maybe we're not feeling all that hot, uh, there's something about communion. If we do it right, that resets everything. Remember, God's grace never ends and his mercies are forever. And we thank God for communion. And so Javier is going to lead us into communion. Javier, please. Oh, dear. Sita Church and everybody who is watching this. Uh, during communion, we commemorate, we celebrate, and we declare what Jesus did for us in the cross and in hell. That he made us, uh, made it possible for us to be God's child again, to be God's children, their son and, uh, and his son and his daughters. Okay? So, uh, when we eat the bread, we are saying that we are also part of the body of Christ, the, the yeah. church. And when we drink the blood, the blood is what gives life to this body, is what cleans us, and it was allow us to be spiritually alive. So let's commemorate that. Uh, the night he was going to be uh, crucified, uh, started the process. Uh, he was together with his apostles in communion also with uh, them, and he uh, took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to them. And he said, take this bread, which is uh, my body, that is broken for you. 
uh, it was broken so that we could make cold again. So let's take it. After eating, Jesus also said, take this cup uh, that is the new covenant. In this new covenant, uh, there's a deal. Uh, we accept what Christ did in the cross. We accept his, uh, the bloodshed that cleans us. Uh, it took all shame, all guilt, all sin away from us. And we were made new creatures. Uh, new children, the children of God. Let's take it. So every time we take this bread and this wine in this way, uh, we are declaring all what Jesus Christ did for us. Amen. Amen. All the blood of oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Amen. Amen. Thank Praise you, the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Very good job. Praise God. Well, it is tithe and offering time, I hope, Pastor. Yes, it is. And you're up, Steve. Thank you. All right. Well, I do want to thank uh, Pastor Loretta for her wonderful message about God and the, uh, God the Father. Uh, today, I'd like to talk about the promise of God, our Father. You know, a long, long time ago, God promised Abraham that he said in Genesis 17, chapter 17, verse 8, also, I give to you your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger. All the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. So after hearing that promise, Abraham had Isaac, and Isaac had Jacob, and Jacob had 12 sons and one daughter. Well, not 12 sons, I'm sorry, because uh, not 12 tribes, because one split and so forth, had his kids. And then they went out to Egypt. And then 430 years later, they started to uh, conquer or come, or come out of Egypt. They started conquering the land. So after, let's say, 50 years or so, so the Lord, well, this is in uh, Joshua chapter 21, verse 43 to 44. So the Lord gave to Israel all the land of which he had sworn to give to their fathers. And they took possession of it and dwelt in it. The Lord gave them rest all around according to all that he had sworn to their fathers. And not a man of all their, of all their enemies stood against them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hands. So it all happened hundreds of years later, and God did, did not forget. You know, the Bible has outlasted any empire or dynasty in the history of mankind. And that is re not only remarkable, but not re that's not only remarkable, but it is also an undeniable accomplishment in itself. In the Bible, God is a God of his word. His promise will come to pass. If God fulfilled his promise, if God fulfilled his promise with the Israelites, he can certainly fulfill his covenant with you when it comes to tithing. Believe that he will open the windows of heaven when you bring your tithes and offerings to his storehouse. Yes, Malachi 3.10 is also God's promise. Listen to the Holy Spirit regarding the amount. Take that leap of faith and trust him. He did it for his other children and he shall do it for you too. The giving information is on zchurch.live. God bless you as you give.
I have a few announcements before the afterglow, afterglow begins. Please check our check out our website, zchurch.live. You will find Z Church blog and all our past services are there. And they will build your faith. If you go to the Divine Connection tab, you can leave a prayer request and discover our various Zoe groups. You can also contact us if you're interested in finding a place of service on the Z team. There are plenty of opportunities available, and there's a place for you. We encourage you to join Pastor Larry for his current meeting series on the gifts of spirit on your good live devotional, live on Facebook at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, weekdays. We'll be moving into the afterglow shortly, and our host today is, I believe, Christine. On Zoom, or on Zoom, you will be. If you'd like to observe only, please stop your video and mute your microphone. If you're watching on Facebook and have a question, please take our, let our moderator know and it will bring your question into discussion. We, we would also appreciate any feedback you can give us about the service. And now that we have an update on our Zoe groups. Hi, I'm Terry Branham, and I am honored to lead prayer at Z Church along with our amazing Zoe prayers. Zoe is the life of God, and that's the thing that we bring to your situation and to you personally when we pray for you. If you would like prayer, contact us at info at zchurch.life. We meet on Wednesdays at 930 California time, that's Pacific Daylight time, Send us an email and we will send you a link. Or, if you prefer, you can put your prayer requests on on Saturday mornings in the chat section while we're on live. And we'll be glad to respond. The thing I love about our prayer times most is that we see answers. We've seen people delivered. We've seen people healed. We've seen peace come in chaotic situations, family situations turned around, depression out the window, no more, we're not having that. We'll declare the word over you and bring the life of God to you and to your situation. And we'd love to have you join us. Again, contact us at info at zchurch.life. Be blessed and thank you. Zchurch.life We are here in Afterglow. And what I would like to do first is to say happy Father's Day to all of the men who are with us today and those out there on any platform that you are on and enjoy your holiday weekend. This is a special time for you. Just receive all the blessings that are offered to you. And then what I'd also like to do is to be able to pray. Um, this message was really, really powerful. And Pastor touched on uh, people who had perhaps absentee fathers or they didn't really have a father in their life. Um, but there are also people who had fathers who weren't good, who were present, but they were really difficult to deal with or harsh or bitter or angry or abusive. And a lot of people don't know how to receive the heavenly father because of that, or they don't know how to receive a spiritual father. So I would just like to pray for that group of people. Father, we just come to you right now. And I thank you that you are ministering to people who have had such a hard, difficult life as a child because of their father, because of the circumstances or the situations going on in their life that they are either afraid of that relationship or they're fearful of you. They're fearful of spiritual fathers. They're fearful of receiving from men in any way at all. I thank you, Lord God, that you can help them to understand and have a clear acceptance of you as their heavenly father who is love 
love, who is kindness, who is gentleness, who is peaceful, and who is receiving of them in every area, Father. And for those who feel as if they don't belong, that they don't belong in the house of the Lord, or they don't belong in a situation, Father God, that involves you or other Christians, Lord, just give them a sense of being able to receive from you the peaceful presence of the Holy Spirit upon them and allow them to have what it is they have need of in their life to accept Christ as Savior and Lord, to accept you as Heavenly Father, to accept the Holy Spirit as a friend, as an advocate, as a lawyer, as a defense who will stand for them in every circumstance and situation, Father. And I praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right. The Lord. Amen. Um, okay, so who would like to share something that they got out of the message or they just, you know, you just want to share something that's going on in your life right now? Okay, Joseph, go for it. <laughs> All right, I got a, I have a John 14, 2 story. Um, I was putting gas in my car. This was a blog entry that I wrote, but it's just be a lot better if I just explain it. So um, I was putting gas in my car. This was like maybe 15 years ago or so. I wasn't walking with the Lord as I am now. I didn't know the Lord's word like I do now. Praise God. And I was I was at the gas station pumping gas. And this, uh, uh, this African-American woman uh, came up. I don't even know where she came from. Like it was just, she appeared. <laughs> And uh, she was wearing a white, a flowing white African boo-boo, which is like a robe all the way to the ground, just white. And then her, she had an African headdress that was like this tall, and it was white. And she was carrying a box. And she came up to me, and she said, would you like to buy a CD? And I said, you know, I'm, I was a musician, and I am a musician, so I, I, was, I like to support um, local talent. So I said, okay. I said, how much? And she said, $10. And I reached in my pocket, and I only had a 20. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll get two of them. And she started crying right in front of me, like just tearing, like, oh, my God, thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is okay, cool. So I, I got the CDs, finished pumping my gas, got in my car. And at the time, you know, I had a CD player in my car, so that's a while back. Stuck the CD in. And, um, you know... <clears throat> That there was like maybe eight tracks on there, and there was, some of the tracks were they were kind of lower quality, but there was one track. It was track four, and the, and the chorus was "In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you." And I didn't know. I've just kept on singing that 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 chorus. It over and over, everywhere I went, even when I wasn't playing it, I just kept on singing that song, and I was like, I, I didn't know what that, where that was from at the time. So when I started, you know, reading the word, and I saw that, I was like, oh my goodness, that's amazing! It's like God just picked me out with that arrow from heaven and just hit me like, like I just felt so. <laughs> It's, it was amazing. So that's that's my John yeah. fourteen two story. Amen. Oh, that's that's awesome. Awesome. Amen. Yeah, you never know where God's going to meet you. He likes to talk to people at the gas station. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who else would like to share something? I would like to share something, if you don't mind. Oh, that's fine. My- my connection is kind of bad at the moment, but I hope I can get through this. Um, the last week, Satan has been attacking me quite often. And I got to be really careful of what I share because I can't share everything because he has set traps that the Lord has supernaturally saved me from. And when he allows me to, I will give that testimony. But I do want to say that most people know that when Satan attacks you, and he attacks you more and more and more, 
then you know that your time is coming, that something is getting ready to happen that he really does not want to happen. I think it's kind of funny that he is trying to get my faith. So the things that the Lord wants to happen does not happen. But because of what he's doing, and because I am able to laugh at what he is doing, because the Lord is protecting me so much, it's like my faith is getting so big. I don't know what he's thinking. He doesn't know what he's thinking because <laughs> it is bringing my faith up instead of down. So yes. I just want to let you know that I will have a major testimony out of this when the Lord allows me to reveal it. That's but tough. God is supernaturally saving me and stopping the attacks and saving me from the traps that he is setting for me. And I praise God for that. And that is what I really wanted to share. I just want to give encourage you to know that God is protecting you no matter what it is. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Anyone else would like to share? I see there is a pastor here from Pakistan. Would you like to share with us today? Yes, praise the Lord. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 So praise the Lord. Greetings in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving me a chance to speak. So, uh, you know, I, I would love to say that uh, so God is working uh, with his uh, mighty power, power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, the life uh, is going to be changed. And many, many people coming to Christ, accepting him as a Lord and personal Savior and getting water baptism and filling with the power of the Holy Spirit. And Amen. they are just uh, becoming a part of our Heavenly Father. So praise the Lord. So uh -huh. even though uh, there is persecutions, even though there is threats, even though there is troubles, you know, but uh, uh, God is working. His spirit is moving you know, and uh, people are coming to Christ. This is the testimony, you Amen. know. Amen. Great to hear. And Thank I'd like you. to pray for you right now, if that's yes, all right. Yes. Father, in the name yes. of Jesus, we just command angelic hosts to surround this place in Jesus' name, this pastor yes. and his work and all who are gathered around with him, Lord God. We thank you that you are powerful in the midst of persecution, that you desire to do mighty things, that you are a miracle working mm -hmm. God and you are bringing forth extraordinary things, Father God, to bring yes. peaceful peaceful deliverances out for the people, protection, Father God, yes. protection that is beyond yes. comprehension, something that cannot be done by man, but only by the Father in heaven. And we thank you, Lord, for many, many, many more salvations and much, much, much more power coming forth in Jesus' name, that the anointing will flow like a mighty rushing river towards this place in Jesus' name. And we will hear tremendous testimonies yes. of new Amen. things springing up and coming forth that they've not ever seen the like of before yes. in Jesus, Jesus name. name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Thank you so yes. very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I would love to share the testimonies later, but I don't know how much time I have, but uh, whenever, uh, you know, you give me more time, then it would be honor for me to, to speak uh, the testimony, what God is doing amazing things, you know. Because um, many people wants to know about the about the troubles, about the persecutions, but uh, you know God put in my heart to uh, to just share what is positive things going on, and the positive thing is that that the, the spirit of God is moving, you know, yeah. and uh, He is using uh, uh, His people for the blessings, for the salvation, for the deliverance of the people, and uh, many many other nations and other tribes is going to be changed and they're just saying that only Jesus is the Lord and he is the savior and only he is the king of kings. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Be in some time when our pastor is here and you can talk with him about, you know, how you can have some time to share. Yes. He's, yes, thank he you so very much. 
He yeah. went to celebrate yeah. Father's Day today, so he's not with us right now. <laughs> yes, thank you. Happy Father's Day uh, for, uh, to all of you from my side. Bye bye. And to you too. Thank you. All right. Anyone else like to share today? Terry, you got something good to tell us about? I really enjoyed all the translations that she read. That was amazing because I'll admit some of those things I'd put off into the, you know, by and by, the sweet by and by. But if he prepares that room for us now, oh my, we, we need to enter in. And, you know, as we pray, we prepare a place for him as well. And so praise God for that. It just was really good. Don't get lost in despair. There's dwelling places. There are rooms. And um, it makes you want to go visit the whole house. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, I like that, too. The voice translation she used where it said yeah. that Father's home is designed to accommodate you. <laughs> yeah. That's a blessing. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right, Miss Paula, we haven't seen you in a long time. You got some I know. Here. Uh, I'm so sorry. I don't I'm, look. I lost my video so that uh, my face is there, but I took the uh, mute off so you could see that I was here. I hope. Amen. It's so wonderful to see everybody. Um, it, it's been um, a busy time. And it's been, I want you to know, it's been a good time. And, you know, God is continuing to bless us. And I'm continuing to see your beautiful faces, pray over you. And I, I speak with uh, my BBF. And so I, I'm in touch with everybody. And what I wanted to say as the message goes about a father. My father, um, Earl J. Crosswright, born in Evansville, Indiana, as an only child, who became my father, is a wonderful, he is deceased, but I still speak in the positive as if he is alive, because he is alive. He is continually touching our lives. Um, and he was such a wonderful father. He provided, he loved us, he cared for us. Um, for, and, and I've said this before and you've heard me, but as an African-American man in his time of um, financial struggles and, and, and not having all that he needed, but we seem to have all we needed as I look back on it as a child. But now that he's deceased and we became power of attorney over his trust and my mom's trust, um, the things, the property that he purchased, the investments that he made, it has been over a million dollars that he has left my, me and my siblings and his grandchildren. And it's just amazing that we, we keep getting calls for people wanting to buy property, for the government wanting to take part of the property for an interstate I-10 in Florida exit. Um, and it's like, and we drive around and we look at these properties and we're like, how did he even find this property? I mean, it's just a testimony that I just want to give glory to God for my father because he made being a father and us loving him and respecting him. He has paved the way for my sister and my brother and myself to love the Lord. We have this love for our father and we can love the Lord. I think because of him, we have the faith that we have because we know the goodness of an earthly father. So it must be the goodness of a heavenly father. And I just want to give God the glory. Happy Father's Day, my father in heaven. And happy Father's Day to my dad. With great pride and glory and honor, I call his name Mr. Earl J. Crossright. Amen. Amen. Praise the God. The word says here to leave an inheritance to your children, your children's children. He took that seriously. He did. 
Amen. <laughs> Sweet Amen. testimony. Amen. It's powerful. It's what we all want to do and strive. Amen. To do. Oh, <laughs> praise God. All right. Anyone else before I'd like to wrap this up a little early today, in case people have shopping to do for their fathers or weekend plans and things to go on. If nobody's just burning to have to say something, we can scoot out early today. No. All right. Okay. I'm going to call on Mr. Bob to let him wrap up the meeting in prayer and whoever shuts us off, then you shut us down. Well, okay. If you're going to call on me, then I'll, I'll get the final, final word here. All right. All right. <laughs> and, and I'll just add that even, even before the service today, as I was driving around having my morning cup of coffee before the, the service, I was having thoughts about living in the father's house. And I think too often, even a lot of us born again, spirit filled word of faith, people are missing out on, on a lot of what God has for us because we haven't caught on to the fact of living in the father's house. It's still somewhere far off, far away. How do how could we possibly get the stuff of the father's house into our life here now in this earth? But we're already, as we've learned, in the father's house. We already, there's already a place for us in the father's house. And it's in the father's house where the goods are. Instead of seeing ourselves down here on earth and, and the father's house far off, we, we've got to learn how to go live in the father's house. And even once we enter in, learn how to function in the Father's house. Yes, God accepts everyone into his house, but I'm I'm mindful of like in a in a great house. If you'll picture some some movie or book that you've read or something about one of the great houses that have servants and great dinners and so forth, you know, to really get in on the good stuff, you need to grow up and learn how to sit at the adult table so that you're not out in the back hall with the kids, you know. You're, you're adopted into the family and you're loved no matter what. But the really good stuff is at the at the adult table, at the That's big true. table. But it, it it takes growing up and learning how to function in the ways of the father and his house. And we would do well to, to learn, grow up in and walk in his ways so that we can not only live in his house, but partake of all the best things that his house has to offer. Amen. So. Yeah, As we go out, our Father, we pray and we yes. praise you and we thank you for adopting us into your family, for loving yes. us. When, yes. when, when we were yet enemies and outsiders and foreigners and strangers, that yes. you loved us and adopted us into your family praise God. and made us together praise with you, Jesus, yes. the joint Amen. heirs of you who is the heir of all things, all of the yes. goods of the Father's house. Amen. And we just pray that we receive your Holy Spirit living and abiding and dwelling with us 24-7 and all week yes. long until we come yes. together again, showing us the ways to live together yes. with you in the Father's house and all that you have for us there. We, we give ourselves to you to, to be yours with you where you are in the Father's house, learning how to live in all the good things you have for us there. We bless our pastors and all yes. that participate in Z Church, those out there who are going to listen to the podcast during the week. And we say we are your family together and we receive you loving us just the way you want to in Jesus' yes. name. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's been so good. Be blessed. Yeah. Enjoy your weekend. Yes. yes. Enjoy. Be blessed. Bye-bye.